Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 27th day of January in the year of our Lord, 2024. I should have learned by now, always go to original sources. Never rely on the media, social or mainstream or anything else to tell you the truth. Because you will not hear the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in any of those places. So there's been a firestorm on the Internet, on Twitter. We've got this deal going on between the state of Texas, Governor Abbott, and uh, the basically the head of the, uh, uh, what do they call it? <laughs> the Department of Homeland Security, which should be abolished. All those things George W. did should be abolished. Uh, you don't want concentration of power. You want diffusion of power. Always. The United States was not built on the concentration of power. The United States Constitution was to limit the power of the federal government. It has utterly failed in its purpose. It's limited. It gave it only certain enumerated powers and nothing else more. The, con the, the Supreme Courts, they should all be impeached. And all their decisions vacated way back. Because they're unlawful. They don't recognize, they have not used the, Supreme, the, the Constitution as their source of authority. No, they're, they're like the Roman Catholic Church. What does that have to do with the New Testament, New Testament Christianity? Basically nothing now, other than a few facts, like Jesus existed, he died for our sins, he rose from the dead. Other than that, what do they have to do with the New Testament? Nothing. What do they have to do with Christianity? Nothing. It's a monstrosity created by man. That's what the federal government is. It's a leviathan. Uh, don't didn't the founding fathers think about that? Yeah, they did. They did. Okay, so we're going to look at this situation. What is really going on on the border in some ways? Now, I haven't lived down there for 10 years, but I did live down there for 10 years, almost on the border itself. And I crossed over many times and, and uh, was very familiar with communities around there and the river itself. And okay. So, and the Border Patrol and Crawley, yeah, uh, I know the area. And I've actually, I don't know if I've ever actually been to Eagle Pass, but I've been by that area and I've been, I've driven along the entire southern border actually several times. Um, and I've been to uh, El Paso on the far west over there, so I'm pretty familiar with the area. Uh, the river depth varies depending on the time of year, too. So we're going to look at the court case. So the Supreme Court made a ruling, ruling, and people are saying all kinds of things about uh, the Supreme Court's ruling and Governor Abbott's violating the Supreme Court's ruling and all kinds of crap like that. All nonsense. We want the truth. So this is about the truth. I'm going to give you the, the real truth here. What, what the courts are saying, what this whole thing's about, really about, unspun by the useless garbage media that I don't know who they serve, but it's not the American people. And all those, also all the talking heads on, on social media that have made statements about certain things that they're, they haven't looked at the sources. And I've said some things about this too without going to the actual decision, but looking at the actual decision. Ah, that clarifies things. That clarifies things. And I've heard some, you know, talk about Gaza and these the false, you know, the beheaded, beheaded baby stories that are still going around. They're absolutely false. Uh, the statements about the uh, the Texas National Guard watching some uh, a, a mother and her children drown in the river without doing anything. Absolute lies. It's just propaganda made up by... This country has a a certain population of people that are liars. They care nothing about the truth. They don't love the truth at all. They just want their agenda to go through. They seem to be concentrated in Washington for some reason. Could they put that wire back up and could we like weld the gate shut? Oh yeah. So here, let's look. First of all, before we look at the, now let's go to the, the Supreme Court document first. Okay, so this is a miscellaneous order put out by the court. 
without comment, without comment. This was, uh, this is all the court said on something. And we'll go to the something. So here's the Supreme Court, the piece of paper that came out. This is, this was not a Supreme Court ruling on a case. This is simply what you're going to see here. This is all it says. Monday, July or January 22nd, 2024, uh, order in a pending case. So this has to do with a case that is pending, but it is not a decision settling a case by the Supreme Court. And the number is 23A607. This wasn't the easiest thing to find, by the way because you get all these news stories put out of the, by these uh, manure factories called mainstream media and everything else pumping out garbage on on the internet. Just nonsense. So you have to dig to find the original source and buried under all this poo. Order in pending case 23A607, Department of Homeland Security, uh, at Al V Texas. So Homeland Security versus Texas. The application to vacate injunction presented to Justice Alito and by him referred to the court is granted. So this is a, a statement vacating an injunction. It is not ordering taxes to do anything. It is not ordering the uh, Homeland Department of Homeland Security to do anything. It's not ordering anybody to do anything. It's vacating a injun an injunction, a temporary injunction, in fact. I believe the December 19, 2023 order of the United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Court, court case number 23-50869 is vacated. Nullified. Nullified. Removed. Justice Thomas, Justice Alito, Justice Gorsuch, and Justice Kavanaugh uh, would deny the application to vacate the injunction. So those are the, the four justices that uh, didn't want to vacate the injunction. So all the rest were, the other five were, well, so, so what was this about? What's this injunction that they vacated? They removed. They removed the injunction. That's all they did. That's all that says. Doesn't say any more than what it says. The injunction is vacated. That's all the Supreme Court said. Does that restrain Texas? No. Does it restrain anybody? No. It removes a restraint. Okay, so this is the Court of Appeals of the Fifth Circuit. This was what was filed on the 19th of December, 2023. There's the case number right there, 23-50869, State of Texas, the pla uh, plaintiff, versus United States Department of Homeland Security, Alejandro Maya. Um, Mayorkas, I don't know how you pronounce Mayorkas, Mayorkas. Secretary, United States Department of Homeland Security, United States Customs and Border Protection, United States Border Patrol, Toy Miller, Acting Commissioner, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Jason Owens, in his official capacity as a chief of the U.S. Border Patrol, uh, Juan uh, Bernal, in his capacity. So this is actually uh, against individuals and the Department of Homeland Security. Individuals. These are the dependents. Oops. I know why the court vacated it. Before Haynes, Willett, and Duncan, uh, circuit judges. So this was an appeal from the district court. And so here's a published order. This is what was vacated. Texas seeks an injunction pending an appeal to prevent the United States Border Patrol from cutting, destroying, or otherwise interfering with concertina wire, parentheses, quote, unquote, sea wire, 
Texas has constructed along more than 29 uh, miles of municipal and private land in the Eagle Pass sector of our southern border. This isn't federal land. It's not federal land. In fact, the federal government, ha there is no federal land in Texas unless the federal government purchased it. <sighs> The district court granted Texas a temporary restraining order. So this is, was granted, this is the circuit court. Uh, so the, the district court had granted a temporary restraining order. I'm not an expert on this stuff, so uh, if, if I get something wrong, you're free to rebuke me. Okay, wait, where was I? Okay. Granting a, uh, granted a temporary restraining order after it held uh, hearings, heard evidence from multiple witnesses, and received copious documentary evidence. Despite making numerous fact findings supporting Texas claims, the district court ruled that the United States sovereign immunity had not been waived under 5 U.S.C. 702. This is important because uh, Abbott is Governor Abbott of Texas is now making a claim to the right to self-defense under a provision of the United States Constitution, not just federal code. So having to do with the rights of states established in the Constitution. See, so uh, Abbott is not a stupid man. No, indeed. He's smart. He's got cojones. And Biden's in deep doo-doo. <laughs> Biden isn't going to take Abbott behind the barn and beat the snot out of him like with a chain like he did with Corn Pops. Another mythical character from the Biden imaginary world. <sighs> And that the court was therefore barred from converting the TRO, temporary restraining order, into a preliminary injunction. So a preliminary injunction is an order to stop something until the final decision comes down, I believe. Because that's a preliminary injunction rather than a permanent injunction. A temporary injunction is, uh, okay. I haven't had any formal legal training, but I picked up a lot of this stuff from listening to things over the years and reading things. A temporary restraining order is basically put in to prevent uh, damages that can occur while the the court process is in process. So, it, in other words, it prevents one side from continuing to do damage to the other side. It's, it's a little bit like what the International Criminal uh, Court of Justice did to... Israel, which interesting in that example, though, the court decision, because it was from South Africa against sovereign states, against Israel, and since the Palestinian uh, Hamas is not a sovereign state, they were not actually a party to the, to the decision. So the de decision ordered Israel to immediately stop action that was effectively genocide against the Palestinians, but it didn't actually prevent the, uh, the Hamas from doing anything because they can't actually be brought before the court, I don't think, because they're not sovereign states. The, the ca case was between South Africa and Israel, and the Hamas was not a party to it. Uh, court decisions aren't universal. They only apply to the people in the, that are in the defendants in the court or the, the, the parties to the, to the procedure. So, so technically, uh, constitutional decrees that the Supreme Court, for example, a, a thing on uh, abortion or gay marriage or whatever, only applies to the particular parties that were involved. It doesn't establish law. Not really. <sighs> By custom, it sort of does, but it does not. The Supreme Court cannot make law, even if they think they can. They can't. That's... <sighs> Texas immediately appealed the district court because they, the district court said, 
uh, we can't do this because the people that you're trying to to get a uh, uh, the a d injunction against are covered by sovereign immunity because they're employees of the federal government or the agents of the federal government. So that you're the the federal you can't actually sue them personally. I think that's the basis of it. Or I don't know. It's hard to sur sue any government agency or any government period because they claim sovereignty. In other words, they claim to be the highest authority. Now, in the federal system of the United States, the federal government is not the highest authority, even if they think they are. Technically, they're not. The states have more power under the Constitution than the federal government does. The federal government is restricted to certain enumerated powers. And the, the federal government can make all kinds of laws claiming authority to do things, and they can get away with it because nobody challenges it. But they don't actually have the authority to do those things. If you read the Constitution, you'll realize that a huge percentage of what the federal government does is actually unlawful. I don't recommend you read the Constitution. It will make you very unhappy. If you care about truth and justice and doing things in a lawful manner. Law, yeah, it's important because disorder is bad. Uh, anarchy is far worse than anything, than, than any law, really. Anarchy is terrible. Uh, don't want that. And everybody does what they want. Everybody's a law unto themselves, and then the guns come out. Then you create governments. Out of that, immediately, the neighborhoods will, will start claiming control of law and order for themselves. They have to. They have to. That's what will happen. Well, that's what happened in Portland, Oregon, when the city abandoned that, that section that claimed their own sovereignty. Well, immediately some criminal elements came in there and took over and said, I'm the head. <laughs> yeah, I'm the strong man, and all the, the wimpy woke bowed down, because what else could they do? Yeah, that's how it works. That's what happened in Ukraine, too. Of course, the United States pushed it into that. So they were, uh, so the Texas, uh, Texas appealed to the, to the uh, appeals court, and the panel granted a temp temporary administrative stay while considering the party's submissions. Uh, okay, concluding that the district, uh, the district court legally erred with respect to sovereign immunity. So the decision of the appeals court was that Texas, that that uh, the sovereign immunity did not bar the court from issuing an injunction against the plaintiff, uh, the uh, defendants, the Department of Homeland Security and all those people uh, and the departments they had. And that Texas has otherwise satisfied the factors under uh, Nikken, uh, Nikken versus Holder 56, 556, uh, U.S. 418, 434, 2009. We grant, so this is the, the appeals court, uh, Fifth, Fifth Circuit Appeals Court of the United States. We grant Texas's request for an injunction pending appeal. So this is a, uh, an injunction to restrain the Border Patrol and the Department of Homeland Security, a.k.a. Biden, from uh, that guy he appointed, from destroying Texas property, like Verage Wire, and trespassing on Texas ground. <laughs> yeah, because this stuff is on Texas soil. It's not in the river. It's not on the border itself, which is in the middle of the river. Uh, defendants, accordingly, defendants, so this is the, fed, the feds, are enjoined during the pendency of this appeal from a damaging, destroying, or otherwise interfering with Texas's 
seawire fence in the vicinity of Eagle Pass, Texas. Again, court decisions tend to be very narrow and very focused, so it's only in this area, uh, because this is where the, the feds were messing with. They were actually facilitating illegal immigration rather than seeking to prevent illegal immigration, which is the purpose of the Border Patrol. That is something. As the parties have agreed, defendants are permitted to cut or move the sea wire if necessary to address any medical emergency as specified in the TRO. Okay. There's, there's a false story out there, I'm pretty sure it's a false story at least, about a woman and a, one or two children dying, there's no photographs, drowning in the river because of the sea wire. Somebody just made that up, I'm sure. Uh, if, if there were any Texans, Border Patrol or state troopers or anybody there, or civilians, they would have done whatever they could to help those people. They would have done it. Now, you New Yorkers might have just stood there and enjoyed the spectacle, but this, we're talking about Texas. Texas. It's the fake news, fake news. So the parties, both parties agreed, yeah, where if you got to cut the wire to save people, to aid people uh, in an emergency situation, nobody had any problem with that. You see that? These, these fake stories about Texas was preventing emergency help just lies. Just who, who put those stories out? They should be delivered over to Texas authorities for the typical Texas punishment. I remember when we lived down there, I, my family's in Wisconsin, so we were up there, and I, we were at, what was it, uh, Menards, Lumberyard. So I was bringing some stuff out for something, and uh, I mentioned, oh, that we had Texas plates in the vehicle, I think, and I mentioned, yeah, we're from Texas. And I forgot what, what it was, but what we were discussing, but I said, you know, in Texas, we hang horse thieves. I wasn't being serious. And she was shocked. She was a guard there. She was like, oh. <laughs> like I that was just my family my father's humor. I have a sense of humor that's like his and it can be a little bit um I don't know the proper word for it. Somebody else probably knows. It's humor that is not obviously funny. Droll? Is that is that the word for it? Okay, so here, then this is followed. So this, the uh, the appeals court granted a temporary injunction uh, pending appeal. And this, what follows is f facts and proceedings. So there is a, what is this, like 15 pages of court established facts and the actual proceedings of this case. So this is along a 1,200-mile border. This is the evidence that was presented by Texas, basically. And down at the bottom here, I, I found some photographs. This is, I didn't read through this whole thing because it's all into the details here. Uh, and again, it goes into the, the why the court claimed that, decided that uh, the, the feds don't have sovereign immunity in this case against... Texas's cl claims, Texas's trespass to chattel claims. In other words, uh, the federal government was trespassing and destroying private property or state property or municipal property. They were, they don't have the juris the power to do that. They were in viol They were trespassing. Uh, chattel is property. Oh, here it, it, it details it here. Uh, the Texas had a, had a strong likelihood of success, according to the, the appellate court, uh, on appeal because the concertina wire is state property, of course. State property. It's not federal property. The defendants have exercised dominion over the property absent of any kind of extringency. In other words, they have control over it. Or, I mean, um, 
uh, the, 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 the feds here, defendants, had exercised dominion. So there was no justifying cause that the court could see for them doing what they did, to the feds doing what they did with the razor wire. There was no emergency situation in certain cases that they saw because both sides agreed that it was completely acceptable to both sides to cut the wire in an emergency situation to render aid. Aid to people in an emergency condition, not aid to people just trying to get across the border, which is apparently the Border Patrol's current function is to aid illegals into successfully entering the United States without interference. That's a change of purpose. I mean, they can't be fun they're funded for the purpose they were established for was to impede that, not enable that. So what do you do? You impeach the president. You impeach the head of the the, the uh, uh, didn't uh, Ms. Green, Mrs. Green, or whatever, uh, aren't they impeaching Mayorkas? I think they are. I think she put she put forward a immediate uh, bill of impeachment in the House of Representatives. Yeah, good for her. Sometimes she's not necessarily on the right side, but good for her. The federal government needs to be pruned back severely. Uh, but in order to do that, the states have to take up the responsibility because they can lawfully do a lot of things the federal government can't do including social services, which is outside the purview of the federal government. Really is. That's, read the Constitution, if you dare. You might want to have a little a can of beer or some tranquilizers or something <laughs> before you do it. Uh, so the, 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 the feds exercised dominion over the property. So they, yeah, they took control over it without any reasonable cause. And they continued to do so even after being put on notice of Texas's property, uh, interest in the property. So even though they knew it was Texas property, they continued to destroy Texas property and remove Texas property in the state of Texas. On appeal, Texas reasserts is the likelihood of this, uh, success on that client. Defendants do not brief this issue and have have waived, thus waived any argument. So they didn't respond to the claims of Texas. The Homeland Security Department did not respond to Texas' complaint of trespass and destruction of Texas property. Uh, then they go on to, well, Texas has shown that it would be irreparably injured absent a stay. Yeah, that's, that's obvious, too, a, temp a stay or injunction. Uh, to prevent continuing damage against te Texas interest, not just their wire, but these illegals coming into Texas, which end up being uh, an expense to Texas. The government, the federal government's imposing a, a, an expense on the states where these illegals are brought in. Here's some photographs, part of this thing. This is the appendix to this. Uh, um, what do you call it? appeals court? So this is yes, this is uh, this would be Eagle Pass, and this is Mexico on the top, and this is a whole string of immigrants walking across. It looks fairly deep there, and here's a border patrol boat looking on. Looks like a guy standing at a gun there, machine gun, just letting them pass, not doing anything. Not trying to impede it. And you notice they're all carrying uh, bags on their head. That would be possessions and clothes, dry clothes. <laughs> yep. And here's a concertina wire, a razor wire, on the Texas side. Obviously, there's a, a hole in there because they are just crossing right through. This is only one layer, but you don't want to get tangled up in this stuff. No way. That's why the military uses it. It impedes your your travel, you can cut it, but uh, you can't just push it out of the way very easy. It just sort of wraps around you and grabs you. Here's another picture of the same kind of situation. Migrants, a whole chain. This isn't just a few. I've never seen 
uh, personally seen people coming across in this quantity. I've seen individuals and maybe a couple people uh, going across the river, swimming. Uh, common area uh, way to do it in the area I lived was you you see somebody heading toward the river in Mexico with a inner tube on their shoulder. You knew where they were going. They weren't going swimming for fun. They were going down to the river to paddle across in places where it was fairly deep. Okay, here's another picture. Uh, this is the Border Patrol with a line assisting people. Is that what they're doing? Oh, I know what they're doing. They've got a line tied. It looks like they've got it tied to the razor, the, the wire. They probably cut the wire, tied a line on it, and then the, these people at the top here are pulling the wire out of the way while these people walk through. That's a Border Patrol. That's a Border Patrol unit. Look at that! Right there! He's got a wire cutter in his belt. Are these actually Texas Border Patrol? Or are they federal agents dressed up as Border Patrol? I mean, native Texas, not Texas agency, but Texans by residence. That's a heavy duty wire cutter right there. So you've got the Border Patrol assisting these people rather than turning them back and say, go back. They're assisting them entrance at a non point of entry. There are legal points of entry where you come across. This is not one of them. The Border Patrol is acting contrary to its established purpose. If anything is an act of insurrection, this is. This is insurrection. This is Biden deliberately having his people violate the federal law, the federal law and state law. To facilitate what? What kind of... I don't quite understand a defined purpose for allowing all these illegals in the United States in this way. There's, they've got to have a political purpose for it because there's no rational purpose. Because it certainly does nothing, unless they're trying to destroy the United States by overloading the system like this. The United States has never allowed this kind of immigration. No, no, no. My grandfather had to have a sponsor in the United States, and then he had to go to Ellis Island for quarantine uh, and processing. Sponsors like a cosigner on a load. So you had family or people in the United States who would guarantee your behavior. So they'd be on the hook for you. Here's some more pictures. This is on this is on the Texas side. More. Uh, see, this is people. Yeah, see, they're facilitating people going through the wire. That's what they're doing. Border patrol truck. And a boat. And again, they're they're opening the wire to allow people through, and they don't seem to be doing it. Uh, the guy, and they're just walking away. Yeah, yeah. I'll go on. Have a good day. Welcome to the United States. So is that the, you know, I've never seen the Border Patrol do that. Not when I was down there. Okay, so that's that's what's really going on here. And again, so what does this, what did the Supreme Court say? So the Department of Homeland Security, this is uh, uh, versus Texas. This is the uh, appeal to void, to uh, vacate the injunction, the temporary injunction that the the uh, uh, appeals court put in there until the the issue was actually resolved. Not really call it a temporary injunction there, but that's it. This application to vacate injunction presented to uh, Judge Alito and by him referred to the court is granted. December 19, 2023, the order of the United States uh, Court of Appeals for the 5th District case 23-50869 is vacated. So the appeals court decision to grant a 
injunction or temporary inj a preliminary injunction was removed. So the injunction is removed. That's all it says. And four of the justices did not vote to remove it, including Alito and Kavanaugh and Gorsuch and Thomas. Okay, so that's what the whole thing is. So what did the court actually do by vacating that injunction? See, the court had put an injunction on the feds to prevent them from destroying Texas wire. So the, 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 the Texas turned to the feds, uh, to the court, said, hey, these are, guys are destroying our property. And the court found that they were indeed destroying Texas property unlawfully. The finding of facts. The previous court, the district court, had decided that, yes, Texas, uh, the feds were doing this, but the court did not have the authority to issue an injunction because they thought that the feds had sovereign immunity. And the Court of Appeals said, agreed with the findings of the court, except they thought the court was wrong as far as sovereign immunity. So they thought, no, we can issue an injunction. And therefore they did. A, a temporary, or an injunction pending appeal. And so then here, the, uh, uh, the federal government asks the Supreme Court to remove the injunction that was legally inhibiting them from destroying Texas property and assisting the illegal aliens to enter. Uh, so the Supreme Court vacates the injunction. It doesn't decide any. It, it, this is not a decision. It simply removed the injunction that was pending appeal, the legal restraint by the court, and they, expl they don't explain why they did it at all. So this is not a Supreme Court decision. It is not a ruling. It's simply removing a court injunction pending appeal. So what does it do to Texas? Not a thing. What is it? it? All it does is remove the legal restraint by the court, by the uh, Court of Appeals, on the Border Patrol and Homeland Security. That's what it does. It removes uh, the court order for them not to mess with Texas property. But it doesn't do anything to Texas. It doesn't prevent Texas from putting up wire. It doesn't prevent Texas from repairing wire. It doesn't prevent Texas from impeding the Border Patrol from doing what they're doing. It doesn't say anything about what Texas can do at all, which is what I find interesting. Contrary to all these talking heads, that are asserting that the government, the Supreme Court decided against Texas, they didn't. It just had to do with a injunction from the court against Texas destroying or removing or meddling with Texas property in a 30 mile stretch at Eagle Pass. That's all it does. It doesn't say anything about what Texas can do doesn't say Texas can't put wire up there at all. It doesn't say Texas can't arrest illegals. It doesn't say Texas can't deputize the Border Patrol. <laughs> say, no, you're with for us. That'd be, there's all kinds of interesting approaches. And I think Abbott, he probably has some things in mind. In fact, uh, he's, I think they've already considered the possibility of the dunderhead in the White House attempting, the people are, are urging him to attempt, attempt him to nationalize the, the, uh, the Texas uh, National Guard. Now, Texas has their own state militia, too, that can't be nationalized. Uh, see, what, what the nationalizing the Guard does is, is the, the governor of the state is, this, is the commanding, is supreme commander of the National Guard in the state. Under, when, the, uh, when the Guard is nationalized, the president of the United States becomes the supreme commander of the Guard in that state. 
whether they can actually do it or not is uh, that happened in the South uh, during the Civil Rights Movement. I think it was Kennedy that did it at one point. The desegregation that was ordered by the Supreme Court, uh, the, the governors were opposing that, and the, the state police even interfered uh, with black students uh, entering white schools. And so it was uh, either Kennedy or Johnson that national, nationalized the guard in those states. The guard wasn't involved in it, but he nationalized the guard and used it to protect the students entering. So th there, was a, there was a court ruling, a Supreme Court ruling, and the state was trying to impede uh, the, implication, the imp implementation of that ruling. And so he, the, the, the president nationalized the guard in the state and then used that guard in order to protect the students. That's a little different case. Uh, this, is, uh, a, this is not similar at all. And so you would, first of all, you would, you would try to get Texans to, inter, to assist the Biden administration to bring illegals into Texas? Do you think they would obey you? What if the, what if you have a conflict like this? So Abbott says, I don't think Abbott would do this because they've already considered this. Uh, Abbott is currently the commander in chief of this of the Texas National Guard. So what exactly so if Biden would try to nationalize them, would they necessarily go along with that? It'd be an interesting thing, interesting case, because you have the principle of obedience to lawful authority. So when uh, typically, and this goes back to Christians too, and Calvinism actually, uh, some of these issues came up in the past. So when you've got a, say an emperor that is, acting contrary to scripture and contrary to, to moral law, or he's acting actually against the law itself, and you've got a, a, a government agency that may be technically lower, in the United States it's not, that is because the states are not under the, the sovereignty of the United States. The federal government was created by the states and exists only for certain purposes, and when they're outside of those delimited uh, enumerated powers, they have no authority. Interesting case. It could. Problem is, the Supreme Court tends to go with custom rather than the Constitution, so there's a problem here. But it, it would certainly be an interesting intellectual thing. Uh, it seems that Abbott has already considered this, and other states are sending their National Guards. So is he going to nationalize all the National Guards? Plus, he's already, uh, th there is a, some people that have been trained in um, control in the border because this has been an ongoing problem in Texas. And I think it was, they were already starting to send some National Guard at times down to the border to assist with uh, uh, the Border Patrol when I was there assist with uh, support functions, not directly engaging in law enforcement. So what do you do when the police refuse to, or under orders? The National Guard, the Border Patrol is not acting on their own here. They are under orders to do these things contrary to their best judgment. They're being forced to do it by their employer. Uh, Who is acting constitutionally, Abbott? The the border patrol, the Biden is 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 lawless. He, uh, but it's a it's a responsibility of the House of Representatives to impeach him, and they don't want to do it for political reasons. And there's an election coming up. So, governor of Texas, Abbott's already considered a number of possibilities. Uh, he was talking about paying people that have had received the, this training in how to handle things lawfully on the border to assist the border security. 
Uh, apparently, there's been some instruction in that uh, for various people, and the people that have been through that, he's offering to pay them, I think, $55 a day to to help on the border. Uh, others, you know, there's all kinds of things Biden, uh, Abbott could do. Uh, could he do the opposite of nationalize, statify the Border Patrol in Texas? What could he do? That would be an interesting approach. That'd be an interesting approach. You could probably get the support of at least 26 other states that are already supporting Abbott. Uh, you, you, the state could do an emergency appeal to the Supreme Court, for example, and si asking them for for temporary control of the Border Patrol in their area because the federal government is in a state of uh, mutiny against the Constitution and uh, refusing to fulfill their obligations that they've all swore allegiance to uphold the laws of the federal government. So under these circumstances, we ask that the, the, the governor of Texas be given temporary authority over the border in the state of Texas and the the forces of uh, in the Tex and the border patrol in the state be turned over to his authority on a temporary basis pending the disposition of the lawlessness that exists in the federal government the curing of that uh, so there is so you could you could have something like that done the ways to avoid armed confrontation. The Border Patrol is not going to take up arms against the Texas National Guard. The Texas National Guard is not going to take up arms against the state police or the governor. It's not going to happen. Uh, the federal government doesn't have authority to use American troops. So this is, an, this is not an insurrection. It's about the Constitution. Who is supporting the Constitution? It's Abbott. It's not Biden. Biden is the enemy of the Constitution. Uh, Maracas, uh, Maracas, or whatever his name is, is an enemy of the Constitution. They're not, they took an oath to carry out these laws. There's already laws on the books on, how, on immigration. And they're refusing to do it. Who's going to hold them accountable? Well, the Fed, you can't hold, the feds aren't going to hold themselves accountable. The states have to do it. They have to do it. And I mean, you can go to the federal court, but the federal court, who's going to enforce the decree? All it does is, all they can do is authorize the states to take action in this circumstance. And you, you, Texas might as well go to the state Supreme Court. But since the, the, the Border Patrol are, there's another possibility. You, you can go to the Border Patrol agents and say, hey, we'll, we'll give you a job taking care of the border under the state of Texas. Uh, I mean, there's, you can get, if, if you've got 27 states that are supporting this issue on Texas side, they've got a whole lot of power in the Senate, too. That is a majority of the senators. If they beat them over the head thoroughly, the states say, you're going to vote on this on our side or you're finished in this state. Same as the House of Representatives. The states, the governors, and the people in the state can say, you're going to go the right way on this or else. And if you you got to choose whether you work for the United, you work for us or you work for the Israelis. Or how much money have you taken from APAC? Then there's always threatening them with investigations on uh, them being sold out to a foreign power. There's all kinds of things states can do to encourage people to do the right thing. That may be necessary. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Uh, Biden, you know, the corn pox story, I, I wouldn't take Biden serious or anything. He threatened uh, Texas the other day. It was the, the deadline was yesterday that if the Abbott didn't back down, there was going to be serious trouble. For who? For Biden. 
Yeah, I'll get my chain and we'll go out behind the bar and I'm going to beat the snot out of a Texas governor because he's in a wheelchair. <laughs> well, I don't know. I suspect a Texas governor may have something bigger than a chain inside his coat pocket. <laughs> it might be a six-shooter. Texas, but this is, uh, that's Texas. <laughs> That's Texas. And it's one of the better things about Texas. There are some bad things. Texas government's not always great, but I think Abbott's pretty good. Some of the governor's JW was worthless. Uh, they don't always elect the best people. They have problems, especially in the big cities, too, uh, with all the vices that we see going on in other cities. So there's uh, problems in Texas, and a lot of people are going to Texas, you know, escaping from California. They're bringing their problems with them. But, yeah, this is Texas is in the right. You see, the, the issue is, too, is uncontrolled immigration destroys cities. It destroys the country. And the Democrats, some people, apparently the Democrats, don't care, unless that's their purpose, to destroy the society. Uh, in order to have their great reset or whatever they're planning. Uh, <clears throat> whoever they're serving, well, I know who they're serving, but <laughs> it's not a human being. Uh, they don't necessarily know who they're serving. But that's what's going on. So the fact is, the Supreme Court decision does not inhibit Texas from doing anything at all. It just said just removed the this, the uh, the injunction against the Border Patrol and Homeland Security. So the the things that are, the memes that are going out on Twitter X, the Texas flag with the barbed wire, with the barbed wire on it, it says, come and take it. Yeah. Can Texas interfere with the Border Patrol? Of course they can. Of course they can their property. They, their property. This isn't a federal road. Get out of here. You're on state property. Trying to, they can arrest them. They can arrest federal agents for destruction of state property. Make it more interesting. Uh, I don't think the Border Patrol would, would you know, because they have generally have a, a working relationship there with Texas, and I, they don't want to push this. They're getting suckered into it. They don't want to cut the wire. It doesn't serve their interests. It's their, the people at the top. Uh, I don't see any of them coming down there and trying to cut the wire themselves. I don't see any of them down there looking at the circumstance at all, anyway. Where's Biden? Where's Why is he not at Eagle Pass looking at what's going on? Where is Kamala Harris, the border czar? The, the czarina. Where's the border czarina? Why are, they, why are they facilitating this? What is their purpose? Why isn't Congress asking these questions? Why isn't the Senate investigating the insurrection in the White House, the overthrowing of federal laws, a deliberate violation of federal law by federal agencies. Interesting questions, but nobody seems to be asking those questions at the federal level. So the states have to ask these questions. The states have to form a coalition of the willing to enforce federal law if the feds fail to do it. And what would the argument against that be? Since the feds are willingly ignoring the law? See, that's where the subsidiary authority comes in, that people have a duty to support lawful government, uh, when, the lawful element in government. So if, if the higher level goes unlawful, then your responsibility is to obey the next lower level that is operating lawfully. See, the authority of the federal government, in this case, 
has that they have abdicated their authority by refusing to uphold the Constitution and refusing to carry out their oath. So therefore, say the the federal the the uh, Texas National Guard said, "No, I'm not going to serve Biden and this lawless thing that's there because they're not acting acting lawfully." Uh, everybody has to make their own judgment on these things. Are you which which level are you going to serve? Are you going to obey, the, obey those that are acting justly and lawfully and constitutionally, or are you going to obey the enemies of that? See, there is a hostile domestic enemy in the country that all these people have sworn to to uh, to resist, to defend against the hostile enemy in the country, which is currently the Biden administration and certain elements in the federal government, including the Congress and in various administrations up there that are hostile to the Constitution. They have to be resisted by everybody in the country. You have a duty to that, according to your means. But hold, you hold to that which is lawful and just and constitutional. And a lot of people in this country have sworn an oath to that at one point or another. And that's where you're stuck. Christians have to ask that question. Where is, the for, where is the lawful authority that's acting lawfully and justly? And that's the one you have to support, even if it's not the so-called highest level. And the United States is a federal system, and most of the power belongs to the states, according to the Constitution.